welcome to Mental Music, a podcast made for teens by teens, exploring mental health from a teenage perspective. My name's Grace. And I'm Gordon. Today's episode, we'll be discussing what mental health is and intru- introducing what mental music is. Remember to take our information with a grain of salt, as we are not trained professionals. And if you're experiencing any mental health issues of your own, go to our website and see some links to some really handy websites, or talk to somebody that you trust. Today we'll be looking at different topics like early life experiences, uh, factors and circumstances contributing to mental health issues. Today we'll be listening for, to music from Isabella Gonzalez, Need You Most, Luke Gale, Never Close That Door, Ashley Jeffries, Honey, Save Me From My Falsehood. Now on to what mental music is. Here at Mental Music, we believe in a future where mental health, especially mental illness, is something that can be talked about openly to anyone without fear of being judged or misunderstood based on misconceptions or assumptions. We actually really hope to change this through our podcast and our website. So something to expect in the the coming episodes, we're going to be interviewing some psychiatrists, doctors, GPs, students, teachers, uh, people like that, everyone with experience or professional advice to give. Or just a story to tell. Yeah. We'll be listening to music from student-aged artists. So if you know anybody that um, plays music or is in a band... Or if you are yourself. Yeah, or is just producing good stuff, then send us a link. (laughs) Yep, we'll be pleased to have it on our show. Yeah. Um, We'll be discussing topics like um, body image, um, school stress, relationships, the internet, stress, and we really actually hope to be talking about stuff like physical disabilities, homelessness... um, Uh, Addictions... Uh, drinking, drugs, sex, all that stuff. And, yeah, people like, from to the... rectify some of this, the uh, what's it called? Um, the stigma. That's it. That's the word. Yeah. Tip of the tongue. We also need. We also really want to be talking about the LGBT plus community and people people um, of different races and how yeah. that affects everything. The discrimination stuff. Yeah, like that. basically yeah. anything that affects your mental health. We want to be talking about it. So if you have any ideas for what we could be talking about, you can also send that through our social media sites. Yeah, feel free to message us uh, or send us an email on the site. We have almost every social media I can think of. Yes, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Oh, we don't know. We don't have a Twitter yet. Yeah, we do have a Twitter. We do? Oh, there we go. Now I'll be listening to a song by Isabella Gonzalez, Need You Most. Times you brought out the best in me For all the truth and all that you made me see All the times I was afraid I was lost in the dark but you made my way For all the love and for all the pain No! 
Now, on to our topic, what is mental health? Um, mental health can be started by a lot of things. So we'll start in order of what can affect you. Yeah, yeah, chronological order of what can affect you. So first we have the biological factors. Hey, these can include uh, the history in your family of mental illnesses, uh, different genes that have been passed down through your family, and tendencies that uh, relatives have had. Uh, other things that can't be controlled include early life experiences, mm-hmm. things like abuse, neglect, the loss of someone close uh, that can affect you when you're young and last all your life. Something to be noted is that every experience is valid. So just because you have a biological like you can't control that doesn't mean that that's invalid like as compared to somebody who yeah as compared to somebody that's experienced abuse or neglect yeah. every mental illness or mental health problem is valid everyone can experience their own different everyone experiences something different that's yeah also uh just because someone may have not uh, received the same uh kind of like they they weren't they weren't brought up the same way or they weren't exposed to different uh mental health related issues doesn't mean that they don't have that illness if someone's depressed Mm. because uh they were abused when they were young it doesn't make someone who was depressed because they uh, have a predisposition from their family to be depressed that doesn't it doesn't uh invalidate that yeah there is there shouldn't be no real oh my depression is more valid than yours because of such okay and uh so pretty much with the loss of someone close, if someone if someone close to you, be it a friend uh, of your family, a close friend of you, or perhaps even a family member, when, uh, when or people... or even yeah, so a family member, and that can be anything from your, perhaps your parents, grandparents, siblings, siblings yeah. to even like pets. Yeah, when they when they pass, it's always very difficult for everyone involved, especially uh, if they're particularly close to you, and mm. it's it's normal to uh, react very like react accordingly, having. Uh, perhaps a more difficult life uh, for a short period after that point. Mm. And it's always very good help to to seek help from uh, always, different psychiatrists, so doctors, GPs, people like that. They're always very good at their job and they definitely have helped people in yeah. the past. You're valid and your feelings are also valid. So just seeking out help when you need it, especially when you um, if, like experience any of these. It's the best course of, uh, course of action. Yep. Yeah. Um, now on to individual factors, which are, as as I said, also as valid as everything else. Now, this can involve stuff like self-esteem, um, coping with stress. Um, uh, so pe- things like in school, if you're finding it hard there, work, stuff like that. And these can affect your skills, how well you cope with things, and your thinking style. So you may shift from being introverted to extroverted, mm. depending on how, uh, how you're being treated in work or how you're coping with things. Or perhaps if you're observant over um, other things as well. So if you're really empathetic towards everything, um, you may find yourself feeling a lot more depressed when other people around you are depressed as well. Because, Or just even, yeah, just being observant and constantly being around people that can also affect your mental health so yeah, it kind of wipes off and that's that's mm-hmm. always that's always something that uh people with human nature that they, they they're exposed to so if someone around you you know uh, uh they're not coping too well and you're good friends with them it's not uncommon for you mm. yourself to be affected by that for you for your mood to go down uh and like other other things to occur so if someone you know around you, uh, including yourself, if they are struggling, if, uh, if if they're not coping with work, with school, stuff like that, it's always good help to see the positive side of things. Try to get them, uh, even, even, if, even if it's you, try to get them to uh, work up the courage to, you know, mm. kind of work through. And something I think is also really good, if you have a, pre- a friend that is going through depression or has really bad anxiety or perhaps anything like that, um, I'm just doing general general mental illnesses here but um but if they have like stuff like that or they have they're going through something like that it's also really wise for you to seek out people perhaps a school guidance counselor or somebody like that and you can go talk to them because it's not good to bottle up your emotions something else that we really need to highlight is um the difference between being extroverted and introverted um in terms of mental health yeah so if someone uh say is introverted they don't really have the the energy to hang around with social uh so in social experiences hang around lots of big groups of friends uh they're not any in any way invalidated uh when when it comes to mental health uh compared to someone who is extroverted who doesn't really find it as fun to be on their own Mm. 
Um, that's not to say that um, more extroverted people suffer depression or more introverted suffer depression because there is a lot of like um, stigma or bias, I guess, that um, less extroverted people um, experience depression and stuff like that because they're around people and they're more confident around people. Um, there's nothing. There's nothing scientific behind that. There's, um, in fact, experiencing mental health issues um, by individual factors is almost completely random, can be based on early life experiences and biological factors. So whether or not you're introverted or extroverted doesn't really um, matter in terms of what you what you feel. Um, it may be it may be the reason why you feel something. So perhaps if you're introverted, you may feel a bit more depressed because you can't connect with other people or if you're extroverted you may feel depressed because you um because you can't talk about like you don't feel comfortable talking about it with your friends yeah. or stuff like that okay i found uh the the idea that being extroverted and uh the the stereotype that you aren't able to cope with being alone it's it's complete nonsense uh, conversely when you're introverted it doesn't mean you're you're hopeless in social situations mm. uh it's people like me i consider myself extroverted I'm not. I'm not too swayed by the fact that I'm alone. I don't get upset in the blink of an eye because I know there are no friends around. Um, yeah. And people who are introverted, they also they can uh, have a great deal of fun with friends, people like that. They just gain more energy uh, or experience more. Like they're they're happier yeah. when they're on their own. And when I'm on when I'm with friends, I feel happier. One of my closest friends who is introverted actually. She finds it fine hanging out with us at lunch and like going out and having fun with us. She just um when she is at home and alone and she's reading a book and she's studying, she just study she studies way better when she's alone. Yeah, she has she has a lot more fun. Yeah. And she like her focus doubles when she's alone. It's literally just a thing like that. She may not talk as much when we're when a group of people, but we still all count her as there and She's still very much a part of our group. Yeah, and I think we'll be interviewing her in a few weeks' time. So, yeah, that's, that's something to look forward to. Yeah. Okay, so before we continue, uh, we have a quick song from Luke Gow. It's called Never Close That Door. As the days all pass, they're going so fast, they're going so fast. I will remember always the heavenly bliss, not having to having to miss but you guys like you we've had good times galore a couple bad and some more we're all forgiven I'm sure but it doesn't matter what does is who we are how we've come so far we've all raised the bar I want a true friendship this no matter where we all go, no matter what we all do, as we go our separate ways, I will remember all of you. Even when the time's up, we've all drank from the same cup, but this is and forevermore. I will never close that door. Oh, I will never close that door. Forget time. 
hands that we spend Everything we've done Everywhere we went We'll never forget The times that we spent Everything we've done Everywhere we went You guys are heaven sent Back on the topic of causes of mental health, we have circumstances. Things like stress, uh, be that from school or work, monetary issues in your family, personal relationships. Mm. This can include uh, family, friends, uh, bullying uh, from your uh, from your. That's peers. a big one. That, yeah, yeah, that's, that's always like bullying in person lives. and cyberbullying. And uh, things like crushes, which, which, are, which are always fun to talk about. Um, oh dear. Yes. Yeah, so uh, th- these these can be uh, rather stressful, rather worrying to someone. Uh, but at the same time, if played out correctly, they can be some of the best things you'll ever have in your life. Yeah. So I think people like uh, in your people in your family, they they are the best friends you will ever have. That's that's a thing. If you play it out correctly, they are they will be your best friends. They will be uh, some of the kindest, not most relatable every, people you yeah. ever meet. Something that's really important is that not every family is perfect. And even though you may see someone and say, oh, their family is so perfect, their siblings getting get along, their parents have lovely jobs and they're there all the time for their um children yeah if you look it on the may, inside yeah. yeah everything is not as it seems that's okay. something really yeah. important um also family sizes like that can affect so being yeah. an only child um having loads of siblings <coughs> um, <laughs> grace be quiet grace has uh, five different siblings so yeah that, that's too many that's that's her household one too many yeah, so, uh, yeah, also, friends. It's great having a good friend base. And, uh, this, a lot this, of, yeah. yeah. Especially, but in in um, this this 21st century, though, you do see a lot of, like, different types of friendships. And something that you do see online a lot of the time is friendship, friendships being fake and all of that. Yeah. And I just mean, not being genuine friends with each other. It's always good to know people in person, as well as having a good balance online. So if you uh, have friends in a different country that you've met before, it's great to keep in touch with them. It's always yeah. good to have a good Online friend friends base. as well. Yeah. 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 Because uh, people, people who you consider your friends, they're always great help uh, in social situations, in stressful situations. When you're working at school, it's always good to look to your friends to, to get mm. some help. Friends are also really good if you need to vent about something, I find that. Um, maybe it's just one off or maybe it's to a whole group of people. If you but... need to have a rant, they're good people to go to. Yeah. Because they'll understand. Yeah, they'll put up with you ranting. Sense. Yeah. Like my family might judge me quite a bit if I went on some of the rants that I do to my friends. But friends, they're, they're so, yeah, that's just It's grace. just being, yeah, it's just being selective. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and on to, on to a different uh, bit of a tangent. Bullying. These are mm. bullies. Bullies at school, at work, outside, yeah, outside of your friend circles. That's always, yeah. uh, it's always something present in our lives, and it is very, very distressing for, for pretty much everyone exposed. Yeah. Well, sometimes also bullying occurs in a friendship group. Um, and that's the worst thing because yeah. you feel pressured to be friends with them despite what um, what what might be going on beneath. Mm. And that's something that will be really interesting to talk about in upcoming upcoming episodes. Yeah. And I'd really like to talk to somebody about that, perhaps um, a student that's been through it or someone like that. Yeah, people with experiences, stories. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's always good to uh, if you've been if you've been exposed to bullying uh, directly mm. or if you've seen someone else. Be bullied. It's always good to talk to the people involved. Yeah, always helps. Confronting nine, ten, yeah. nine, uh, nine times out of ten, it always helps. It's great. Yep. Confronting a school counselor as well. Your parents sometimes, like some, or even a sibling that you look up to. So yeah, talking to your parents. Um, it may not be an option for everybody because everybody's relationship with their parents is different. Yeah. But if you do, if you can talk to your parents, like if you trust them with most things in your life. You should be able to talk to them about your relationships with your friends and your, like, perhaps people that you like and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on that, uh, next up we have crushes and remind start in school. Thank you for that, Grace. <laughs> yeah, these, these, are, these are probably the, one of the, uh, the more complicated ones because they're all different with every other person. Yeah. Um, also something that I'd like to mention within crushes and romantic relationships is perhaps sexuality and gender within that. Um, and how people can uh, judge you based on that alone. It's yeah. It's different, yeah. Yeah, something that we, yeah, something that we're really looking forward to talking about is how um, perhaps working out your sexuality as a teen can really affect you and especially mental health or perhaps if you feel like you're not in the right body and 
you just yeah. perhaps changing your gender and how that can affect yeah i'm really i'm really looking forward to talking to somebody about um how their gender has influenced their mental health yeah yeah, yeah. and I, I don't want to sound like uh, your uh school pe teacher but um sex and like the the development in your early years, it's always very confusing for, for pretty much mm. everyone who goes through teen- your teenage years. Who knows what that is? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we're, we're here to uh, pretty much talk to you about uh, how, how things change, how people can be seen, how they shouldn't be seen, uh, and how people see you. That's, mm. that's always important. And when it comes to us discussing topics like sex and drugs and stuff like that... We might sound a little bit like your parents and HPE teachers. Yeah, but that's that's probably because they're correct yeah. most of the time. Yeah, if you look deep into your heart, if you look and listen to listen. these yeah. people, you it, yeah, they're, they're just, yeah, they sound they sound logical. They sound cringy, but it's that's yeah, the way. It's logical. Yeah, it's a way of life. Okay, so uh, yeah, things things like this they can all be uh, rather stressful if uh, if you're not really used to it, if you're not um, if you're not expecting it. But at the same time, they can be very, very good help. Okay, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, on that school and the expenses, both mentally and monetarily, uh, how, how it can affect your life? It's very, it's very deep. Yeah. Because school, it's uh, the first part of your life. It's all you really know. That is your life. It's your, uh, school. If, you've, if you said at one point, wow, school sucks. It's which, probably true. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's annoying. It's a bit of a, an there's, inconvenience. Yeah. yeah, there's an element to everything that sucks and... That's just, it's, it's something we all need to go through, which is, it, yeah. it can be fun. And yeah. as teenagers ourselves, we have to go to school and also do a podcast now, so yes. that's fun. That's fun to run at the same time. Uh, yeah, so with school, it's always good to have someone to rely on to help you through. Uh, yeah. Maybe you can help them if they're in a similar situation. That's that's always good. Yeah, and within school, there's grades and getting like getting your stuff together and yeah. all of that fun procrastination Homework. stuff. Homework, ooh. <laughs> yeah, on that, uh, extracurricular activities, things like work, maybe you're in a sports team or you do debating, things like that, or they can all be... Uh, instrumental music. Yeah, that's all yeah. fun. That's all well and good because if you work, you're getting paid, that's great. Uh, if you're playing sport, you're getting fit uh, and it's also a lot of fun. Instruments. Finding I know, balance yeah. is so hard. It's great. It's great to find that. Yeah. Uh, bit of a uh, as someone who out. yeah I used to so I used to play hockey and I do debating and you play a cello don't you I do play yes. a cello and so oh god the the, the oh practice. gosh the um yeah. yeah the practice that goes in is somewhat quite stressful yes and then going to rehearsals and then also having to study for school and do homework and. Oh, it, yeah, it gets just, overwhelming. It does, yeah. yeah. And even the most perfect people do get overwhelmed. Yeah. Yeah. And on that, even the most imperfect people, they can have friends to look to. Uh, yeah. So if, if you're finding any of this hard, school, work, uh, practicing an instrument, doing homework, stuff like that, the simple stuff, if you're finding it hard, which is, it's, it's not unreasonable to find stuff like that hard, I do myself. It's always good to to look to friends, family, people who can relate to you. Yeah, and who, who you, you can trust. relate to. Yeah, if you trust, trust them, trust is a super important. That's the thing. most important bit. Something we need to talk about just before we go on to our third song is um, dysfunctional families, um, and just like families that are separated or have been, have been messed up in if some sort of way. Your parents have divorced, or in some cases, when a member of the family has passed, and. Uh, like the the complications that come of that. Yeah, and I'm this can distressing. fit into circumstances, um, early life experiences, and just a whole bunch of categories. And yeah. of course, this affects your mental health quite a bit. Um, there's a statistic that, um, oh, it's like almost in like the 21st century that there's a lot more divorces that are happening. Yeah, yeah. I can't quote it's the statistic because I will probably it's, be it's wrong. The fashion. Jeez. <laughs> so that, that got dark. Um, yeah, uh, so yeah, divorce, it's something that, uh, that I mean, if uh, most people have know someone or have been in a family who, whose parents have divorced, and that's, that's not something that's quite rare in society in the 21st century. Yeah, and every, every divorce is different. Like, um, there's the issue of the, um, what do you call it again? The ownership of the custody? children? Custody, thank yeah. you. The custody of um, the children, wherever it's 50-50... 60, 40, or yeah, even like that's always 90, 10, or if it's just one parent um, due to there being a yeah. parent who is perhaps mentally ill or abusive or That's not always alive. annoying, yeah. Uh, it's, yeah, so I mean, if, if your family is kind of... Every divorce is different. Yeah. Yeah, and it 
it ranges in um, affecting your mental health. Um, so perhaps if, like, perhaps if an early divorce may have affected you or a later divorce in your life. So perhaps if you recently went through divorce when you were 13, 14, 15. Or younger, perhaps, yeah. yeah. Um, so that can affect your monetary issues. It can affect your how you're working at school. Yeah. It can yeah. affect your work. How you react, how you uh, react with friends being around. Are you, like, more... Uh, more upset or overall. more distrusting perhaps yeah, yeah that's always a thing um yeah something that i found um when my parents divorced was that i was i for quite some time i was almost distrusting of most relationships and that yeah. was might have been because i moved around a lot as a kid yeah but um it's just it's something that you need to work on and for many people it's so stressful i mean living out of a suitcase in some cases is not the not the most fun thing to do yeah uh so i mean this this ties in with all the other uh, all the other topics mm. things like stress i mean it's it's easy to see how stress would be associated with uh divorce and yeah. things like that dysfunctional families uh and it's yeah it's always good to have a friend base how it you affects your to, family and, which won't be yeah. affected by uh your family yeah um, yeah, so sometimes when you're like, um, if your family is dysfunctional, then um, it is really hard to reach out to your family or like a like a mum or a dad about things. Um, but and if you don't have many friends, um, maybe because of you you've moved or anything like that, it's it, it might be really hard to find yeah. somebody. Um, but you do, like, yeah. Everyone needs to know that there is always a school counselor. I hope so. Anyway. And there are always new friends available. Yeah. Yeah. Though it probably is not the wisest decision to instantly find someone and go, Yeah. My family is divorced. Please help me. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I, I moved into Brisbane quite recently and I, I was stuck in the mindset, hey, I'm, I'm starting anew and it's going to be difficult to find some new friends. But I just kept thinking to myself, hey, everyone that I see around me could be my friend. So I just, I, I walked around. Lo and uh, I met behold, Grace in yeah, one of the, lo and my behold, first few days in Brisbane. We ended up sitting together in French. Yes, that was it. Oh, the good old days. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so it's it's always easy to uh, to find to find something that can sort of rescue you from the stresses of life, and that's that's always relaxing and relieving to find. To yeah, find that. and everything that we've just mentioned can affect your mental health, and so that's just something that we need to clarify before we move on to our third and final song um, by Asha Jeffries, "Honey, Save Me from My Falsehoods." Save me 
up all my faults. Thank you, Asher Jeffries, for that amazing song. Um, before we before we wrap up, um, I'd like to say if we said anything wrong or offensive, please, please, please contact us and we'll try to rectify our mistakes. Also, if this first episode's a little bit dodgy or needs a bit of improvement, send us your critical feedback of us. Yeah, that always helps. Yeah, yeah. but take mercy on us. Yes, it's it's uh, it's our first time, and we hope we've pleased you with it. So, uh, yeah, if you have any more songs that you'd like to recommend to us, uh, if you if you made a song or you're in a group that made a song, please send us your links uh, or recommend uh, a song to us from a school age artist. So, someone someone from perhaps the age of twelve so high to school, uni age, yeah, uni. stuff like that. Um, something that we need to take note of, though, is we can't accept covers. Um, and we won't be able to accept every single song because there is a selection process that we go through. Yeah. Um, if you are going to submit a cover, you have to have the off, like the author's um, permission, and we need to make sure of that. Um, for this episode, if you liked any of the songs, please check the description um, of the podcast. Yeah, you can and... also find all the links online yeah. at our site at www.mentalmusic.org. Um, and all of our social links are under the name of Mental Music Pod. Okay, uh, next up on our next episode, we have school and the mental health uh, kind of topics surrounding that. We're going to be interviewing a teacher and a student, and uh, we hope to see you then. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Oh. 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 Oh.